and welcome to Web Crawlers, the podcast where we do a deep dive into the weirdest, strangest, and most mysterious corners of the internet. I'm Ali Siegel. I'm Melissa Stettin. We have a Patreon where you can get access to ad-free video episodes a day early, merchandise discounts, and fun bonus episodes and activities. And about one to two bonus episodes a month, probably. You can join for as little as $2 a month by going to patreon.com slash webcrawlers. Melissa, who are our patrons for this week? We've got a lot of new patrons. I am so excited. We've got Ginger, Rebecca, Emily K, Lane, Veronica with a K, Christine, Zuzanna. Whoa. With a Z. Oh, Zuzanna. Zanna. <laughs> Nikki, Carmel, a garbage person, <laughs> Michael and Denise. Welcome to the team, guys. We're so excited to have you. Please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts and call into our hotline and leave a voicemail if you'd like to be on our mailbag episodes. Leave a message about something we've discussed in an episode. Tell us a secret. Shh. <laughs> a story or whatever you would like. The number is 626-63-420-69. Insert jingle here. Here. 626-63-420-69. Nice. Melissa, what is our episode about today? Today is an episode that was suggested by Crean Warrior in the Discord. Ooh, exciting. Shout out Crean Warrior. You've heard of the Galapagos Islands. I've always wanted to go there so bad. Oh, really? Yes, unless this episode freaks me out. <laughs> no, it, it won't. I okay. want to go after this episode. Okay, so. Let's plan a trip. Let's go. It's pretty expensive. Well, you got to fly to Ecuador and then you got to you take a boat. No, you take a plane. We'll figure out. We'll let you know. We'll figure it we'll out. We'll let you know how we get there. <laughs> okay. So in 2014, Dana Goldfine and Dan Geller made a documentary called The Galapagos Affair, Satan Comes to Eden. Oh, my God. And it chronicles this amazing story of the first settlers that arrived to the Galapagos Islands in the 1930s. Well, I'll be the judge of how amazing it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they came to the island of Floriana looking for a paradise on a desert island uh, where they could just like, you know, live off the land. You know, everyone's dream. Yeah. Have like a happy, peaceful life. But instead, they found the opposite of what they were in search of. Oh, God. That shit was hard. There was a lot of conflict. There were some very odd events and a tragic end. Oh, no. This is a tale of the Galapagos Affair, which remains a mystery to this day. Oh, I'm excited. I feel like I should throw the sand in the fire like on Are I You know. Afraid of the Dark? The, the tale Midnight of Society. The Twisted Claw. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Floriana Island was... The natural choice for the first Galapagos settlers, because it's one of the only islands with a potable water supply. Oh, interesting. There's, I don't know how many islands, there's like at least five islands in the Galapagos. There's probably like hundreds. Sure. <laughs> Maybe five to <laughs> hundred islands. Yeah. <laughs> so over the centuries, pirates used Floriana as a hideout. Mm. And then whalers would restock food and even set their own Galapagos post office. Oh, interesting. Some of the beaches on part of the Floriana have black sand. It's really cool. Oh, that's cool. beautiful. That's like in Iceland, they have black sand beaches. Oh, I had no idea. It's pretty neat. And they have some like pretty amazing sparkling lagoons. Oh, that's gorgeous. I love a lagoon. Love a lagoon, right? <laughs> it's the sixth largest island in the Galapagos Archipelago. Galapagos Archipelago. 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 <laughs> which is a major draw for wildlife watchers. They got penguins. Oh. They got tropical birds. They got oh. sea lions. They got wow. sea turtles. Oh. Los tortugas. They got flamingos. <laughs> <laughs> they got, they got it all. Uh, so it was no surprise when in the 1930s, the first permanent Galapagos settlers arrived here. Wow. So 
It was three groups of German settlers arrived to set up their own version of Eden. They were eccentrics. Uh, among them Freaks. was a nudist doctor. Not surprising. And his mistress. Oh. There was a self-described baroness okay. who showed up with an entourage of three men. <laughs> I like the sound of this. After setting up camp, she quickly proclaimed herself Queen of the Galapagos. Okay. I love her. I love this lady. Yeah, I like her style. There were also the Whitmers, who was a World War I veteran, and his wife, Margaret, and their teenage son. And I believe Margaret was also pregnant when they oh, came Jesus. to this island. Yeah, crazy. Um, okay, so the, the first, the German doctor, the nudist doctor, Fr- Friedrich Ritter, and his partner, Dora Strouch. <laughs> Strouch. You can do it. <laughs> uh, came to the island seeking solace from life in Germany. Mm. They had both left their spouses for each other. Mm, Ashley Madison. It was a bit of a thing. And the couple wanted to farm the land and live in peace while like leaving the modern world behind. They're like, let's go. Leave yeah. our spouses, start move to life. an island, start over. This is very strange. So Frederick removed his teeth before the trip <laughs> because he wanted to see if his gums would toughen in the wilderness. Huh. I don't know if you made a good choice of a boyfriend. Because <laughs> they, they, there's no dentist on the island. He's like, you know what? Let me get rid of my teeth. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why. He just did it. He That's, was a weird man. Yeah, I would say so. At dinner time, he would wear a pair of steel false teeth that he made before the trip that he eventually had to share with his lover, Dora, because oh. her teeth rotted and they had to be pulled out with gardening tools. Okay, I'm a little confused. That's one thing you don't think about when you go... And live like seclu- seclusion. There's no dentists, and your teeth but are fucked. I haven't been to the dentist. Like, s- sorry to be gross, but I haven't been to the dentist in probably like six years. And you gotta go. I just went for the first time in four years. Did you have like a ton of shit going on? Well, they had to do the the deep clean thing. Right, they, right, right. She put numbing stuff on my gums and had yeah. to like get all the stuff out. But like my point is that like my teeth aren't rotting out of my head. Like why no. are these pe- why are these people's teeth rotting out of their head? Well, I think because our water has fluoride in it. Oh, interesting. This is just the water there is just straight up garbage water. <laughs> garbage water. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I guess that's something you don't think about your teeth will rot. I mean, you're probably like running out of toothpaste. It's not like there's like a market right. there. Oh yeah, they don't have to- there's not an endless supply of toothpaste. How are you cleaning your teeth? I don't so know, they're probably making about. some weird, like, paste out of something, yeah. I don't know, sap. How did people, I mean, people have been brushing their teeth for millions of years, so. I don't know if it's millions of years. Mill- <laughs> <laughs> you know, the dinosaurs and their giant toothbrushes? <laughs> like, I don't think in medieval times. Yeah. I don't How think. Did, people, did they just pull out their teeth? Yeah. I don't know. When did people start brushing their teeth? When did I would imagine. Start? Did cavemen have teeth? No. Oh, around 3000 BCE. Oh, okay. That's earlier than I thought it was. I'm sure they had some sort of like herbal thing they put together. Chinese created sticks from aromatic trees, twigs to help freshen their breath. That makes sense. You just so chew on that. Sticks, chew on a stick. Sticks. Okay. Uh, so yeah, their teeth fell out. Uh, so they were living on this island, and this research party like caught wind about what they were. These people were up to, mm. and they went there to like take pictures to like publish back in a magazine. Like, oh, this couple left their lives in Germany. They're now living right on this island. They built. A house from scratch. They raised chickens and cattle, planted a garden, and they often wore no clothes except boots because it was like so hot and rainy. They're like, 
fuck it. Why do we need to wear clothes? No one's there. I knew there were going to be nudists. Of course, the they were. few visitors that would pass by their home often were like these wealthy travelers who read about them in the newspaper, in the magazine. Like, oh my God, there's this like, they were like a tourist attraction almost. Wow. So they would be greeted by a sign prompting them to ring the bell and wait so Frederick and Dora could get dressed. (laughs) Oh my God, that's nuts. Yeah, it is crazy. So like them being naked added to this like allure. It was like a doctor and his hot mistress naked yeah. <laughs> and living in Garden of Eden on this island far away. Oh, God. So then there was the Whitmer family, and they showed up pretty soon after the, the German doctor and his girlfriend. Heinz and Margaret Whitmer heard about Floriana Island and decided to move from Germany as well. They were also German. Hmm. They had their 13-year-old son, Harry. Margaret was pregnant. They moved to Floriana with the hope that this like famous doctor would help her deliver her second baby. So they're like, oh, there's a doctor on this island. Yeah. He'll take care of us. Oh, no. And he, ended, he did deliver the baby, but begrudgingly. Because oh, he's like, I don't want to... I don't want to do this. I don't. Yeah, you like came I'm to my island. Yeah. <laughs> and like they didn't want to be friends with this family. So there's two different like families living on this island. That's weird to go to a secluded island and not expect to like get along well with the other people there. Yeah. It's, it was really funny. I thought that they were like, no, nah, we're good. Yeah. We don't, we don't talk to anyone ever, but we don't want to talk to you. <laughs> yeah. So like they just kind of lived their separate lives. But then came the next group of settlers, Sick. the Baroness. Our favorite. Eloise Bos- Bosquet de Wagner Verhorn. Wow. Who is an Austrian who called herself the Baroness. Amazing. She had three men with her. Her two <laughs> lovers. Sick. Alfred Lorenz and Robert Philipson. They were both German. And she had an Ecuadorian servant named Manuel Valdivieso. Okay. So she came to Floriana not to connect with nature. What the fuck? She wanted to build a hotel. Oh, that too. (laughs) She wanted to fuck and build a hotel. (laughs) She like started announcing these plans to build this grand hotel. She had her crew set up a makeshift homestead that she called Hacienda Paradise. Hmm. She was looking looking to change things on Floriana. I can imagine the other people were like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, no. So this movie, The Galapagos Affair, which is streaming on YouTube, oh. it focuses on the mystery behind this Baroness and her two German lovers. The Baroness came to the island to build a hotel, disrupted the peace that had been forged between the other two couples. So this like movie is about what happened. Huh. This whole, it's, it's pretty good. It's it's 1930s drama. That's also (laughs) like for me, I'm like, Oh, that sounds like the most boring thing of all time. But, um, (laughs) no, it's good. (laughs) I know, but the way you're explaining it sounds great. But also I always envisioned the Galapagos is like, don't you have to sign Don't you have to get approved to go there and sign a bunch of stuff? Because it's essentially like a nature preserve now, I think. I would assume now. It's funny to imagine it. Yeah, it's funny to imagine it now in its or to imagine it in its beginnings of like these people being like, I'm going to build a hotel here. Yeah, it's really nuts. All these animals that are on the brink of extinction. And this is like the only place they exist. It's really crazy. These people are nuts. So this Baroness is quite the character. There's pictures of her and like video of her. She reminds me of Shelley Duvall. Oh, I love that. From The Shining. Yeah. I was trying to think of who she looked like. And she's like a young Shelley Duvall. Yes, I see it. So and she's like very extroverted, very crazy. 
You can tell she's fun and flirty. She is fun and flirty. She would greet passing ships in skimpy swimwear. She had like a pistol and a gun. It was also considered rather scandalous at the time that she arrived with two lovers in tow. Yeah, well, we love a polyamorous queen. Yeah, and it was not fitting with the more conservative lives of the other Floriana couples. Although the doctor left his wife for this mistress, so... Yeah. Who are they to judge? So the tensions began to rise soon after when the German couples suspected that the Baroness was intercepting their letters back to Europe. Oh, shit. Which were published in the papers. Oh, no. (laughs) So these letters were very popular in the press at the time. Because it was all about their like exotic life that they led on this like desert island. <laughs> this is this is hilarious. So what she would do, people would write letters back. She would <laughs> take the letters, she would rewrite them oh my God. and make herself the center of attention. Like make up stuff oh about my her. God. Like, oh, the Baroness is so amazing. And <laughs> She's so beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> she declared herself as the Empress of Floriana Island. <laughs> Someone's crazy. So the the original settlers, who the the doctor and the, the other family, they were not impressed by her attitude, and soon there was like a rift between these three families. Around the same time, life was not great in the Baroness household. Oh no! Uh, one of her lovers, Lorenz, was often mistreated by the Baroness and her other lover, Philipson. Uh oh! So they were in a little bit of a feud. So Philipson would go hang out with the Whitmer family. He'd be like, fuck you, I'm going to go hang out with the Whitmer. I'm going to go next door. <laughs> I'm going to go next door. So there were like rivalries and conflict, and it just was like became unpleasant for the, all the people there. They were just like in constant fights. But then something crazy happened next. Oh, God. This is where this affair takes a mysterious turn. Okay, March... 27th, 1934, the Galapagos Baroness and her lover, Philipson, completely disappeared without a trace. What? According to Margaret Whitmer, the couple had set sail on a passing ship towards Tahiti. That's very far from there. However, no such ship was ever recorded as having reached Galapagos shores. Yeah, you'd know if like a ship had come yeah. and gone. You got eight people on that island. Yeah, he, someone would see it. So, But Doris St- Strouch's account is quite different, as she claims to have heard a long, unmistakable scream and then silence before the disappearance. And she remembers no ships passing in the night. Uh-oh. To this day, no one knows what happened to the Baroness. And her belongings were found in her residence but there are no traces of them. They just straight up disappeared. What? Like, did they leave on their own? Did they reach Tahiti? Like, were they murdered? Like, what happened to them? To further add to the mystery, the Baroness's other lover, Lorenz, he left Galapagos very soon after. And he wanted to go back to Germany. Because he's I like, well, I don't it. know. What do I do here? <laughs> what do I do here? So he goes, tries to go back to Germany. He hopped aboard a small passing boat headed towards San Cristobal Island, wherever that is. Yeah. But neither he nor the Norwegian sailor ever made it to their destination. What? But months later, their remains were found mummified on Marchina Island, what? which is like way off course from San Cristobal. Mummified? They died from dehydration. In this documentary, there's videos of their bodies. It's crazy. They're just like black. Oh my god, charcoal! Like they're just that's crazy. Crisp. Yeah, they just died from dehydration. It's it's nuts. Friedrich Ritter, the doctor, also passed away very soon after from food poisoning. Okay, well this place is cursed. Clearly. <laughs> well, that yep. So he had eaten some bad chicken. Although many, including Margaret Whitmer, suspected that Dora 
his mistress deliberately poisoned him. Interesting. So Dora returned to Germany soon after. She wrote about her time there, but then later was seeking treatment in a sanatorium. So she kind of went a little nuts, but she wrote about her time She's there. She's probably seen some shit. She's seen some shit. This is like the island from Lost. Like something, yes. something ain't right here. It's crazy. So this left Heinz and Margaret Whitmer as the sole survivors of the Galapagos Island. They stayed on the island, gave birth to their children there. They eventually would open up a hotel that still exists on Floriana to this day. Their descendants also operate yachts and tours at the island. I don't like this, and I don't want to go to the Galapagos anymore. So the, the Whitmer family, they have a um, like a little hotel in there. I mean, it's pretty like shabby. So what really happened on Floriana Island? It's been suggested that the Baroness and Philipson may have been murdered by her other spurned lover, Lorenz. Yeah. And that the Whitmers helped to cover the story up. Or perhaps Dora was involved in some way. Like, why was Lorenz discovered washed up on Marchena Island so far from his destination? Why did the doctor die so soon afterward and under suspicious circumstances? Like, the chi- he ate bad chicken, but, like, didn't Dora eat the chicken, too? Right. So that's very strange. Or is it yeah, all weird coincidences or something more sinister? Um, but Margaret Whitmer passed away in 2000, and she was the last person who was alive from the Galapagos affair. So no one really knows. What happened to the Baroness and her one of her lovers just disappeared? Like her stuff is still there? I don't know. Where would they go? It's very strange. I feel like there's some sort of curse on this island. I think it's weird the other family stayed and continued yeah. to stay and continue to operate this hotel. Like I would want to get the hell out of there. I yeah, I don't it's know. It's weird. But both Dora and Margaret published memoirs about their time on the island. Oh, wow. And they're like very different. They have very different accounts oh, really? of what happened. Yeah. But there's other stories of the Baroness uh, that apparently she seduced the governor of the Galapagos. <laughs> there's a governor? <laughs> she apparently shot a visitor on a hunting trip, uh, though by accident. And apparently she and her lovers would steal food from the neighbors I can imagine that. And when a honeymoon couple uh, cast adrift in a small boat from another island, they landed on Floriana. The Baroness, wearing only a bra and shorts, refused them aid and forced them out to sea again by threatening them with a pistol. Oh, my God. And then she was also rumored to shoot animals and then nurse them back to health. Yeah, I think she's like a psychopath. I think I feel like were all these people possessed or something like. Well, in the beginning of this movie, the first scene is like this guy saying there's an old legend that surrounds these famous tortoises that are on in the Galapagos, for which the archipelago is named for. And these creatures are able to see the intentions of those who visit the Galapagos. And if their intentions are bad, the tortoises will curse them. I believe it. I believe it. Yeah, totally. It was the tortoises. It was the tortoises all along. Yeah, I think the tortoises cursed everyone. And I think they thought like, (laughs) okay, this one family is good. Like, we'll let them stay. But all these other people are like jabronis and we're going to like ruin their lives. There was this black and white movie made. They showed it in the documentary. This person came to shoot a movie that um, the Baroness was in. That's just like a day, a day in the life of her a on the island. Day in the life of the Baroness. <laughs> yeah, it's really, it's really crazy. She seemed very fun. You can see from the pictures of her, like <laughs> she seems like she's smiling and kind of posing, and um, she looks very like Gray Gardens kind of. Um, yes, like that's kind of the vibe she gives, like mentally ill but fun. Yes, and if you look up this hotel it's called the whitmer lodge named after the family it has four out of five stars Mm. someone said this place is basically a haunted ghost hotel straight from scooby-doo yeah i mean like what do you expect (laughs) 
It's almost like I never saw an employee the entire time. Horrible experience. We've been traveling through South America for eight months, and this is by far our most disappointing accommodation. They said it was just like covered in bugs. I mean, yeah, the pictures are pretty bad. I'm looking at yeah. uh, I'm looking at a trip advisor. <laughs> I straight up didn't even know they had hotels. Like I thought you could only go on a cruise and and you had to right. stay on the boat and stuff. Like I didn't even know. I thought you can. There's a bigger island. Yeah, maybe this is not the maybe this is just an offset island. I wasn't. Yeah, if it's only this one hotel on the island, there's San Cristobal Island. Yeah, maybe this is just not the main island you go no, to. No, San Cristobal Galapagos. has is a little small, is a small town. Has 6,000 people. Toilets were clogged. No. There's I no mean, lo- no locks on any of the doors. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I'll go on a cruise through the Galapagos Islands, but I don't think I'll be staying in Whitmer Lodge. No, don't go to Floriana. Yeah, go don't to go to Floriana. Santa Cruz. Island. That looks very nice. Yeah. Um, if you guys have been to the Galapagos <laughs> or know any stories or have stayed at Whitmer Lodge or anything like that, um, Melissa or Whitmer Hotel, whatever it is, Melissa, where can people reach us? You can email us at webcrawlerspod at gmail.com. All right. Well, I am Allie Haunted tortoise seagull and i'm melissa baroness (laughs) stettin and that's all folks goodbye goodbye powered by acast